Hello. Hello. How are you doing tonight, Sydney? I'm good. How are you guys? Pretty good. It's been probably about a year and a half since the last time we talked. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. A lot has changed since then. Yeah. I, was in my, I was in my childhood bedroom at my parents' house. I remember that. <laughs> Oh my God. So um, before we get into the show, uh, I, I found out you guys, you went through kind of a, a highly disturbing chain of events recently where <laughs> you, you guys thought that you'd been drinking a container of oat milk that contained a thumb. Okay. My fiance and I are very dramatic people because we're both actors and we're like, have decided that we're trying to cut out like dairy and sugar and all this stuff, which only makes us crazier. And so one of the things we love is this chocolate oat milk and we'll just like drink it as if it's our treat. And so we were like drinking this whole fucking box of chocolate oat milk in these little shot glasses as if we were like wiling out. And as we're getting to the bottom of it, we start to hear something like clunking around. And we're like, oh my God, oh my God, there's something inside of it. Oh God. And then he had given me like the last bit of it. He's like, oh. I can't look at it because I just made you drink it. So now I have to drink it because I have to be in solidarity with you. Whatever you drink, I got to drink, man. So he just like closed his eyes and drank. And we were like, it's going to be like that episode of Friends where Phoebe finds a thumb. And then he looks and he's like, oh, it's a bottle cap. <laughs> <laughs> but then he's like, now I'm riled up and I'm going to tweet them. We're going to be those old couples that tweet companies and we have problems with them. And maybe we'll get free milk. I was like, okay. <laughs> so he did. But you know, the... The quest for free milk is a valid quest. I will say that. We're old now. If we can tweet somebody and get a coupon, we're going to do that. You can't say you're old now to two guys who are way older than you. Anyway. <laughs> we feel so lame. We just like are so old and lame. We have our cat and we're like, eh, it's Friday night. Let's eat ice cream and watch the Netflix and sit inside. During this pandemic, that's the perfect that's, plan though. Yeah. yeah. So. We're germaphobes. We're huge germaphobes. So we just don't leave. No, it's it's and it's appropriate that we're talking we're saying that because you know staying inside is what allows people to watch uh, your new show on Netflix. Yeah, you know which will be which is going to be uh, premieres next week. It's going to be great uh, to to be able to do that, especially now that we looks like at least some of us are going to be into another phase two f scenarios and locked back yeah. in. So, uh, what can you tell us about uh, the Grand Army? The Grand Army. Grand Army is um, it's this very intimate look at high school students at the biggest high school in Brooklyn and it follows five main storylines of these students and it's their lives in the school and online and it follows their issues with their parents and the other students in the school and it like it covers a lot it covers a lot of issues that kids are facing today and things that are going on in the world and it's um it's a lot to digest but it's a very relevant show and it's it's a pretty important show I think yeah, and you play Anna on the show, who yeah. in her friend group, she's kind of like the motherly one, the, yeah. the one of the friends that takes care of all the other friends. Yes. Um, so with this kind of like in the dynamic, when you're playing that dynamic on camera, do you find that working with the other actors, you end up taking on that dynamic off camera as well? I, it was, I was 100% that person because for one... I was the oldest person on the set. Most of the people on the show were truly high school aged. Um, and so many of them were Americans. So there were so many young people coming over from the States who were like, we can drink in Canada, this is great. And they're like teenagers <laughs> coming over and like we're away from home for the first time and it was their first show. And they were like, we can drink here. And I was like, I'm so old. Oh my God, these kids, I need to take care of them. Like, okay, please drink at my apartment. Please be safe. Like, and I everyone would be <laughs> in my apartment all the time. And I'd be like holding people's hair back while they puked. And I was so concerned about everybody and like, okay, make the choices. And it was really funny because the girl who plays my best friend on the show, who's the lead of the show, um, Odessa, who plays Joey, she was living in an apartment that I was like, this apartment is not safe. There's mold in your walls. I don't like this. You're moving in with me. So like two weeks into shooting, I barely knew her, but she moved in with me and she lived with me for like five months and we became best friends. But it was so funny because I did become Anna within the group. I was very much the like, oh, you're, you're not feeling good. Let me pick you up and take you to the hospital. Oh, you guys want to drink? Can we do it at my place? So everyone's safe. Like it was a little bit of life imitating art. Yeah. <laughs> That that sounds crazy, uh, and but at the same time, it, you know, like 
it sounds like you're having a lot of fun, you know, like not only just on the, on screen, of course, but behind the scenes. And, uh, and, of, and I guess that's kind of relieving a little bit because, you know, it's like, as you mentioned, a lot of the th topics and, and themes that the show is going to be talking about are a little bit more uh, serious and, and dramatic and not as, as necessarily as fun and frivol uh, frivol yeah. frivolity. Wow. I can't even speak now. Frivolous. 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 That's frivolous. yes. Yeah. But as some, some other, uh, uh, you know, things that happen in, in most people's lives, it's going to be that high drama part of it. Um, so that must've been at least a little bit of fun to have that, you know, like behind the scenes to have that kind of fun with, with the whole the cast with yourselves. Yeah. I think it was crucial. Like it was so heavy on the set a lot of the time. And there were times that like, we had an intimacy coordinator. We had all these people that were like support on set. And there were times that after a table read or certain scenes, we would be so emotional that they would just stop everything. And we would like go have therapy sessions. <laughs> like we would have to sit and talk with the um, intimacy coordinator or the showrunner or whoever and be like, this is bringing up things for me. Like this is too much. Um, so it was very heavy on set. And I think because of that, the cast became very close because there was a real trust that like we were all being vulnerable with each other and we had to do these scenes together and it was like a very raw place for everybody and so because of that outside of set it was like a very family dynamic like fun and we would go to the beach for Canada Day and we would go to the fair and we just like celebrated every everybody's birthdays together and really tried to like make sure that it was balanced with a fun experience that we would all remember very positively and that it wasn't just like this is so much to process emotionally because it, there were times that it got very heavy on set. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's uh, that's not, yeah, that's gotta be draining as an actor, like to, to, yeah. you know, to be able to, cause like, I, we like when we spoke to you before, you know, with some of your other roles, you know, they're, they're a little bit more like they have drama and they're serious yeah. tones. Right. But like when you're talking about something that is so real compared to say something like V wars, right. Where it's, that's not, you know, let's it, it's fiction. It's it's not a real world situation. Wait a second. Are you telling me a vampire virus is fiction? I, I, I think I, you I, can't I, say I, that. Because right I'm about so to say the amount of that. yeah, exactly. The amount of viruses we deal with, <laughs> there could be a vampire virus. You never know. <laughs> Pretty close. Come on, man. We don't need we don't need to put that into people's minds. There's already some crazy <laughs> conspiracy theories out there now. Sure. But no, I like I was saying, Cindy, you know, like working on a on a on a show like this, you know, like it, it, for you as an actor, you know, like you, you have that kind of serious thing going on, you know, like how do, how do you handle that on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, when you like kind of like decompressing from that, you know, some of these things that you're, that you're dealing with in a story like this? Yeah. I mean, I think some people, sometimes people look at that type of material and be like, oh, it must be so hard to go there. But I feel like it was harder to get out of it because the scripts were so well written and it was so true to life that it, you couldn't help but get emotional and it was funny because I didn't actually audition for the show they didn't want to see me because I was too old I asked to audition and they said no um but I got hired to work the table read and some of the callbacks and basically like I was reading the callback scenes with the people who are auditioning for some of like Joey's mom or some of these other characters and actually for Anna doing callbacks for Anna and I was reading with them and like the scenes are just so emotional that like as the reader, I was like sobbing with them. And the showrunner was like, hey, maybe you wanna read for Anna? And then I did and then they hired me. And so when you're on set, it's just like everyone's crying and you just can't like, there's no like, let me get into it because you just can't help it. Like it's right. so much. And the thing is like going back to your trailer or like, I would always drive myself to and from set because for me, that was important time to like decompress and like right. listen to Taylor Swift and like <laughs> try and get happy and go home or like put on a sweater that was like my dad's or like my boyfriend's, not my fiance's and like try and be happy again and like shake that off and be like, okay, that's not where I am because I feel like it was so easy to slip into the heaviness of it that you would go home and be like, oh my god the world is so dark and you had to actively work at like making a separation from it and especially because we were spending so much time together like right. you were so immersed in the world of the show that you had to work at remembering who you were sometimes right yeah no i can i can see that now uh of course with the title grand army when we were first yeah. told about it before we actually watched the trailers and stuff we heard 
Grand Army and automatically you think, oh, it's Iron Maiden. Is it a military thing or is it a genre thing? What is it? And then then it's like, oh, no, it's like it's high school. So what is the like the background behind the title? So Grand Army is actually it's a subway stop in Brooklyn in New York. There's a Grand Army Plaza and Grand Army Plaza has this beautiful arch and it's um, right by Prospect Park in New York is Grand Army Plaza and there's a Grand Army subway station. So um, it's a part of Brooklyn, New York. And so in our show there's a fictional grand army high school there is no grand army high school but um our show takes place at grand army high school and so that's like the narrative of it but it there is grand army is a place in brooklyn there is grand army plaza and we did shoot at like the grand army arch and in prospect park and stuff so and with that so yeah shooting in toronto and brooklyn like was that was that like a like like I'm guessing it was like shoot everything in one location and then everything in the other, or was there, was there back and forth? No, we shot everything. We shot for like four and a half months in Toronto, maybe um, everything in studio. And we did all the stuff at the school and then we shot some stuff like on locations in the high schools and stuff for the stuff that was in the gymnasium, um, like assembly things. And then um, we all went to New York for two weeks, maybe two, three weeks. And we did, uh, like press junket photos and stuff in New York and then we did everything that had to be outside so there's scenes that are in Prospect Park that are very important scenes that are like in bodegas in New York that are so quintessential New York that you just can't shoot that in Toronto things that are like Times Square or anything that's in the subway station in New York is in a subway in New York um, streets like Upper East Side New York we shot all that stuff really because it was like very crucial that it felt like it was really New York. Right. So we right. did all of those exteriors that like you just can't fake. We did all of that in New York. Yeah, no, that's good. Cause yeah, cause sometimes when they do uh, Toronto for New York, yeah. when you're watching it, you can just tell, you know, it's like, well, even like, even people who haven't been to Toronto would know, well, that's not New York. So, yeah. so it's good to have that authenticity. Like one I of my, know. really loved that film Serendipity years ago, but that ain't Rockefeller Center. That's Nathan Phillips Square. You know, like you could tell. <laughs> You just you just can't fake it. Like it, yeah. it's such a it's such a unique city. It is its own city, and that was something that I was like, God, I really hope it passes for New York. And <laughs> seeing it because we got to see all ten episodes already, yeah. and it's like, yeah, it looks like New York. It really passes as New York, and so so much of the cast is New York that the feel of the show is so authentically New York that it like it really passes. So that's like, thank God. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, if this is one of those shows where you're like. That's Young Street. I don't know about that. That doesn't seem like Times Square to me. <laughs> yeah, that must be, you know, like when you would, like I mentioned already, like some of the other projects you've worked on, you know, like V Wars and Shadow Hunters, for example, The Expanse. Yeah. Obviously, being in a fiction universe, you can get away with a lot more stuff, you know, totally. like, the, you know, compared to something like Grand Army, because like, as you mentioned, uh, that that plaza, that, that, that arch is so famous that yeah. it's hard not to, you know, like, not know you're not there you know like if you did it anywhere else it would feel out even like subway stations in new york are subway stations in new york you cannot shoot that in toronto and try to be like yeah it's a new york subway station like it doesn't work there's so and they tried to build a subway platform in studio to be like it'll be cheaper it'll be so much cheaper than shutting down a subway in new york that's so expensive and they tried and they were like it does not look like New York. We can't do it. They tried to scout subway stations here and it just was like, you can't fake New York. You can't do it. So we had to go and like shoot everything outside that was outside, outside of New York. Yeah. Wow. Cause like New York subways, I always know they're, I know when they're real New York subways, cause they have those, those metal Current. railings Yeah, and they're the green that go down, yeah. you know, like it's a little, it's a lot different. If you've been in a Toronto subway, you like, they have a very specific look. New York has same. a specific look, yeah. you know? It's nowhere near the same. And so it's like so specific. So there's like yeah. scenes where people are playing instruments, panhandling in the subway in New York. And it's like, it just had to be, it had to, they had to bite the bullet and do it in New York. And it looks so much better. Now yeah. I'm assuming that all of this, this travel was happening pre COVID. Thank God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it happened like, <laughs> like, a, um, yeah, like a year ago, I guess maybe more yeah a year ago it was in like october that we were going right um to new york because we wrapped in toronto in toronto in september and then we went to new york Um, yeah i'm just thinking about like if this was if you guys were filming this now 
in the world that we live in and like the, the restrictions, like yeah. you wouldn't have had that freedom necessarily to, to be able to travel down and, and film in New York like you, like you did before. And hell, near impossible to shoot like assemblies and stuff no. too. Yeah, that's the thing. We couldn't shoot any of the show. I was talking about that the other day with Alex because I was like, our show, not only is it such a large ensemble cast in terms of like the main cast, but every scene has 200 extras in the hallway. The assembly's like 500 extras. Like every time we were shooting, we'd be sobbing and there's like hundreds of kids in the halls looking at us like, what are you doing? Or like taking videos of us. <laughs> every scene is about like what it feels like to be a kid and like go through private moments when there's hundreds of kids that you're like, don't look at me looking at you in the hallway. Yeah. That's what every scene is. So we couldn't shoot it because it's just like, hundreds or thousands of people in every scene like it's just you couldn't do it right now yeah no totally it's crazy um but you know it's good that it got all done before this that's that's <laughs> thank goodness man yeah, no totally now of course the last time you were on one of the shows that we were talking about was the show departure oh yeah which after you know playing overseas and everything like that it's finally it came to canada this week it's and so weird course, they're shooting season two. I'm like, and then my dad was like, are you watching Departure? I'm like, what do you mean? That's just airing now. <laughs> yeah. And it came to the US or the Peacock Network last month, but it started airing in Canada this week. Who knew? Yeah. So, yeah. So have you gotten a lot of people like your dad coming out saying, hey, I finally got to check it out. It's the worst because I forgot that it was coming out in Canada. It came out in the States like two weeks ago, and then it yeah. started airing in Canada this week. And in the very first episode of that show, I am like half naked. And I forgot that. And so the way I knew that the show had come out was I just got all these creepy DMs of people sending me photos of me half naked. And I'm like, sir, wow. that's not an appropriate way to contact me on the internet. Definitely not. I, no. No, I shot that scene. I remember it. It scarred in my memory. It was embarrassing. Like, this is not okay. Yeah. yeah. No, and I was like, oh, I guess Departure aired. Yeah. <laughs> Departure's out and Americans are seeing it because the, uh, British people didn't do this to me. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> My God. Well, yeah, that's that's Cultural unfortunate... differences. Exactly. Right, yeah. Yeah. That's an unfortunate way to find out that your show is airing. Definitely. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, I forgot. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, it's out there now. And... Uh... <laughs> Making my parents proud. Well, hopefully you don't get any more creepy DMs about it. That would be, that's a little, you know, disconcerting to say the least. This, being an actor is so weird. My fiance was Googling us the other day and he's like, you know what comes up when you search your name, Sydney? Feet. Sydney on wiki feet. Photos of your feet. Yeah, that wiki feet is a creepy force, but it is a force. I was, like What? I don't understand people. Yeah. No, I don't no. get it either. It's crazy. No. Yeah. But, you know, thankfully, people are going to get to see you cry a lot so that maybe yeah. they can forget that. The shit. Yeah. There you go. Yes. You'll be emotionally naked. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very much so. Yeah. Oh, my God. Well, Sydney, I want to thank you for coming on the program. Thank you for uh, having me. Yeah, and uh, of course, love love your work, and uh, really looking forward to checking out Grand Army. Thank and you so uh, hope you have yourself a great night. You as well. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sydney. Bye. Bye. Bye.